Hey gang, it's Rob. In today's video, we're gonna go over some questions, some answers, and scenarios that's gonna make the test a little less scary than it is right now. So make sure that you stay around to the end of the video and let's not waste any more time. Let's get straight into it. All right, gang, now we're gonna get into the Network Plus test prep. So let's not waste any time. Let's get straight into it. So to pass Network Plus, you need a 720 out of 900. On the actual test, it's going to be multiple choice, scenario questions, and some performance-based questions. You're going to have 90 minutes to pass 90 questions. So let's get to our first question and we're going to go through it. I'm going to read the question out to you. You're going to figure out what it is. Then we're going to come back as a family. I'm going to tell you what the answer is, and I'm going to tell you why that's the answer. Sound good? Let's get into it. Sharon is a network engineer for a startup. She currently is troubleshooting several servers. The web server she's having performance issues with. She's hold on. I know how to read. The web server seems to be having performance issues. She has gathered data from all the servers that include the web server. Which of the following pieces of data would allow Sharon to understand the normal performance for all servers? For her to understand the normal performance for all servers, she would just have to look at the baseline. So the baseline just shows you, okay, this is what things look like on a day-to-day -day basis under normal operating conditions. Malik just installed several fiber links. Malik wants to certify the performance of new fiber optic links and detect problems with any existing fiber links. What tool can he use to accomplish this? Very good. He can use an OTDR. OTDR. All right. So the optical time domain reflectometer. So I wanted to switch it up a little bit in this one. Usually I throw some acronyms at you. So both ways can kind of mess you up, right? So if you're only used to seeing OTDR, once you see optical time domain reflectometer, you might be like, what the hell is that? I don't know what that is. So make sure that you know the acronym and what the acronym stands for and what it actually does okay if you have yet to do so like the video and share it with somebody that can benefit anybody that's going after network plus okay you are going through the DNS records for your company which record allows you to see which port is being used for specific services all right gang so all these are DNS records but the one that's going to be able to show you what services are being used is SRB, okay? Raquel is a security engineer for Master IT. She is currently looking for weaknesses within a company. Once Raquel's reconnaissance is complete, she will exploit all flaws found. The company she plans to exploit has given her permission and even paid her to compromise the company. What is Raquel doing? Very good. Hopefully you guys said a penetration test. So a penetration test just shows you how many layers can I penetrate? How far can I get inside of a company? Where can I actually exploit different vulnerabilities and different flaws? Now, if you went through my test prep for A plus that we released uh, two weeks ago and last week, you already noticed like, man, there's some security questions on A plus, and then this is, a, I thought we was doing network plus. Why the hell is this, a, this security question on here? Because every um, exam has security portions in it because nowadays that is a super important factor for personal use as well as companies, okay? Like this damn video and subscribe. Next question. Uh, Candace is a network analyst for a law office. The firm is renting out a new office space downtown. Junior techs are running network cables through the ceiling of the office. What cables should the techs be using? Okay, gang, hopefully you said plenum rating. When wires and cabling is ran through the ceiling, it needs to be plenum rated. These cables, if they 
if a fire happens, you know, God forbid, if a fire happens, these cables will not melt and give off toxic gas or fumes. So plenum rated if it's running through the ceiling because if things are on fire, that can be closer to the exhaust fans, it can get into the air conditioning system, so on and so forth, and people don't need to breathe in, that type of stuff. So before I get to the next question, why do I keep on telling you guys to like the video and subscribe? Because um, for me to continue to make this kind of content, I need uh, the support of you guys. Um, liking, subscribing, sharing, and my plan by this time next year is to be at 10,000 subscribers. And I would appreciate if you would help me get there. I'm giving you this damn test for free, so I mean, I don't know why you wouldn't. But anyway, uh, Ronnie has implemented a UTM on the outer portion of a company network. The main office connects directly to the wide area network port on the router that was placed on the edge of the network. Although the router is on the outer edge of the network, it's still on the main network. Ronnie needs to grant access to an outside party. The only access needed is to a file server. Ronnie does not want the third party to have access to the main network. Where should this file server be placed? So gang, this question is one of the biggest examples of something you might run into and uh, something I like to refer to as a bunch of shit that you don't need, right? So some of the questions that you'll see has a bunch of arbitrary stuff that doesn't really matter when it comes to answering the actual question. So only thing that you really need out of this is when it says Ronnie needs to grant access to an outside party, everything after that, right, is what's pertinent for this. So if you want to give a third party access to something, but don't want to give them access inside your network, you can put it inside of a demilitarized zone, okay? Jimmy will be setting up a wireless network for a company. As a network technician, Jimmy knows the office space will be crowded. He wants to ensure the wireless network incurs minimal interference once complete. What should Jimmy do? Jimmy should do a site survey to see where different devices are going to be to see how to set up the routers so they'll incur minimal interference from each other and from devices that will be in use. Most times, a network spoofing attack is when someone impersonates another device or user on a network in order to launch an attack. How does this differ from a DDoS attack? Hopefully you guys picked A. So usually a DDoS attack doesn't really require impersonation, doesn't really care about impersonation. It mostly just tries to get as many computers as possible to attack or many devices as possible to attack one singular um, device, whether it's a server, whether it's a website, which is ran on the server, so on and so forth. So it's usually multiple locations, multiple devices that's all coordinated to go after one single target. We made it through the Network Plus test prep. As I've said through the lecture and through the entire test prep, like this video, subscribe, share it with somebody that can actually um, benefit from watching this video. In the description below, you can find our full Network Plus exams, our full Network Plus course, and we also have our bundle course in there that includes A+, Net+, and Security+, Plus, all in a self-paced online course. Other than that, I'll see you in class.